A surprise update has hit for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, giving the best of both worlds on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. The focus of the update, as of patch 2.01, both consoles now run at 60 frames per second while pushing a 4K picture, or at least something close to it. More on the specifics there later, but this is all achieved via the game's resolution mode, which previously ran at 30fps on PS4 Pro and One X. It's great news for those after an all-in-one 4K60 option then, and it gives the new console generation hardware much more of a workout. There is a twist to this, however. In direct comparison, there's a clear PS5 advantage in pure frame rate returns in the game's most taxing scenes. Woodland areas, cutscenes, you name it. PS5 gets a smoother performance. So exactly what's going on here? And looking to Xbox Series X, which recently gave the game an FPS boost option to allow for 60fps gameplay anyway, is there any difference in now running on the official 60fps patch? And of course, what of Series S? Let's find out. So what do we have? The game is now labelled as optimised for Xbox Series X and S, giving it some next-gen credentials on the Xbox dashboard. Meanwhile, you still have a PS4 app label on the PS5 menu, but the patch notes do mention, and I quote, support for 4K at high frame rate on PlayStation 5 in high resolution mode. So to recap, Shadow of the Tomb Raider's resolution mode previously ran with a 30fps cap on PS4 Pro and Xbox One X but at a high pixel count, 1872p and 2016p respectively. And then to get 60fps on these machines, you had a frame rate mode as well, with the resolution lowered to 1080p on each. Now, this mode toggle stays in place on PS5 and Xbox Series X, where the 2.01 patch makes a few key tweaks. Crucially, a new code path is used on PS5 to let it run at 60fps in that resolution mode, while its resolution is changed there too to 4K with checkerboard rendering, or essentially 1920x2160. So, in other words, compared to PS4 Pro, we go from 1872p at 30fps to 4K with checkerboarding at 60fps on PS5. Not a bad trade. What of Xbox Series X then? Well, the upgrade path is a little more streamlined here. Series X keeps the same 2016p image as One X in its resolution mode, while also getting that all-important bump to 60fps. So PS5 sees a more radical change from last gen all round, where both frame rate and resolution are changed via the patch. As for the frame rate mode on each, there's honestly nothing much changed in the rendering setup. Both PS5 and Series X continue to run at 1080p and 60fps there. So you might be thinking at this point, isn't the frame rate mode now a bit surplus? Well, the truth is it actually offers a more stable 60fps locked alternative, as we'll get to. Okay, to round out the summary, we have Xbox Series S, which had no mode toggle to begin with. It continues to run at 900p, and on the new patch, it just gets an officially instated bump to 60fps, rather than relying on FPS boost to do it. So, with all that in mind, I think it's best for us to get straight to it. PS5 up first. Again, this is the resolution mode, and to be frank, it's a practical 60fps lock all the way through the game's opening temple mission. A majority of the time, it's a rock-solid turnout, partly thanks to a move to 4K checkerboard rendering. There are these points though during select scenes, the flood sequence being one, where heavy alpha drops the frame rate graph. The cause and effect is pretty clear all the way here. Transparency effects for fire, splashes, even dirt can cause a strain on PS5's GPU. It's still only relatively momentary though, limited to set piece moments like this. Likewise, around this busy woodland mission, you will catch small hits into the 50s, but the bulk of gameplay, it's again in the right place and holds 60fps pretty nicely. That change to 4K with checkerboard rendering is a curious one. Clearly, a full native 4K, that is a proper 3840x2160 pixel frame, would have been too much for PS5 given the evidence of drops already here. Just 1920x2160 is enough, at half the pixels of 4K. Also curious is that the PS4 Pro's resolution mode stood at 3328x1872, 
which to my eye doesn't show checkerboard artifacts in the same vein. Now on paper, PS5's pixel output per frame amounts to a lower number if PS4 Pro is indeed pushing a native 1872p without checkerboarding. But then PS5 quite literally doubles the frame rate over PS4 Pro, giving it the higher overall temporal resolution. All combined, PS5 pushes out a perceptually sharper image than Pro could from moment to moment. 4K checkerboarding is a more direct linear scale on one axis for a start, which helps, plus it's a good fit for this resolution mode in its attempt for 60fps. Okay, next up then is Xbox Series X. The surprise in this case is Series X is rendering at a native 3584 by 2016 without checkerboard rendering. It's pretty close to the full 4K then, but just shy of it in order to salvage performance. Now, there is a small advantage for Series X in overall clarity. Fine elements like tree leaves have more definition in stills, but you have to look close to catch it. The upside is a clearer image on Series X then, but there is a downside as you can see already. 60fps gameplay on the resolution mode here is far less dependable than the PS5 version. The flooding set piece really tumbles hard, well into the 40fps region at one point. Again, it's all alpha inflicted drops that suggest GPU side bottlenecking on Series X. The crash of waves, even transparency heavy woodland areas, see the console play out continuously in the 50s. It's great to see the resolution stay in line with the 1X version, but you can't help but feel it pays the price for it. The silver lining here, of course, Series X supports VRR, variable refresh rates, if of course your TV is compatible. And that will help limit the sensation of drops for these moments. But for those without a supporting TV, these frame rate lurches do stick out a little bit. It could have used a similar res drop to PS5 honestly, though I will say a bulk of gameplay does hold at 60. I mean, just expect taxing segments like this to buckle, and any cutscenes with heavy alpha. It's also worth touching on the fact that, well, Xbox Series X already had this 60fps option in its locker. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is among a recent wave of titles to get an FPS boost mode, selectable in the Xbox menus. It's removed now that the official IDOS Montreal 60fps patch has landed, but it really did the same thing, and here's the comparison to prove it using our banked FPS boost footage versus the new patch. I plucked out the worst offending areas in the game here, just to see if there's any variance. And 99% of the time, well, the two ways to play are identical. Both run at a resolution of 2016p, with the same core settings in lighting, shadows and textures. No wonder then that the reading is so tightly synchronised for the flooding set piece. Even running this woodland route gives the same essential reading. So, no real gain over the FPS boost 60fps option, but honestly, it's great to still have 60fps officially instated for the resolution mode. There's nothing too lavish about this, but we haven't lost anything with the removal of the game's FPS boost option on Series X. Which draws us to the final question, which is the best way to play on console? Well, at least comparing Xbox Series X to PS5 in their resolution modes, there's no question PS5 wins out in performance. The 4K checkerboard technique works superbly for a start, and generally allows for a tighter lock at 60fps. Series X has a clearer still image, one closer to a true 4K in raw detail, but in motion, the detail breakup you experience with checkerboard rendering is disguised by the game's TAA and motion blur. It's a strong use of the technique that gets it close enough to pass on PS5. The saving PS5 also gets in frame rate terms can be stark too. At some points we're seeing a lead of around 10fps in PS5's favour, and it rings true as a more optimal so-called 60fps experience. Of course, neither version is perfect in its resolution mode, which is where the frame rate mode comes in. Prefer a near-perfect lock at 60fps, switch the toggle over on PS5 and Series X and you get a native 1080p, rendering all these trouble spots, the floods, the woodlands, at a solid 60. You'll note cutscenes have a small freeze frame on camera angle changes. It's subtle but goes identically for both machines. We understand this is a means to start rendering effects like motion blur and even physics, with this extra starting frame used as a kind of buffer. 
It works, but yes, you'll see these occasional stutters on each machine. Otherwise, this is the mode to use for a near perfect 60fps readout. Last but not least, of course, is Xbox Series S. The reality of this version is it hits 60fps without any issue whatsoever, at least from the first few hours. Even the worst of our Series X tests don't get a drop. It's a pretty superb lock at 60fps, though, resolution-wise, it retains the circa 900p image of the older Xbox One version. The net result isn't all too flattering to look at on a big 4K screen, though at the very least, a smoother frame rate is locked down. An interesting case then, Shadow of the Tomb Raider replaces the FPS boost toggle on Series X with an official 60fps update, and it's mostly a win. A more aggressive cut to resolution would have certainly helped iron out the kinks on Series X. Certainly on the evidence of PS5 here, a lower resolution equates to better performance. On the whole though, it's a solid, unexpected update that, in a rare instance here, digs deepest on the PS5 version to adapt its code, for resolution and more. A great game got an even better way to play, and if nothing else, it's a new excuse to play it if you haven't already. But that's all I have for today. If you did enjoy this quick look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider, do feel free to like or subscribe, and don't forget of course, to hit that button for instant notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality version of this video, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net, and to get in touch directly, just use Twitter. But from me for now, thanks for watching.